What's up everybody, Ryder with Will here, and for some of you guys who follow me on Instagram and YouTube, you guys know I ended up buying a beta and a 2019 Husqvarna. So today, I kind of wanted to give a first impression and thoughts on the 250i, and yes, this is the 2019 TPI model. Alright guys, so here's the first impression of the uh, Husqvarna. I'm on third gear by the way, this thing is lugging just fine, just a little clutch, you know. So, here's the thing guys. I'm a new rider, kind of, and I, I wanted, I like the two strokes a lot more. This thing is completely stock right now. So I'm on fourth gear, and man, this power is super linear to me, man. First of all, I came from a KLX 250 and a DRZ 400, which we all know its power delivery system is much different of a two stroke. The only two stroke experience was from a few of my buddies who let me test ride their smokers. So I wanted to find a pretty easy flowy spot to test out the power delivery system and believe me guys, I personally think this 250i is a beginner friendly bike if you switch the power mapping to the second setting on the handlebars. So I put on the mapping too, there's a, there's a map right here and I put it on number two, I don't know if, if you guys see that. Dude, this thing lugs on third gear no problem it's honestly not scary at all to ride it's very mellow power but the grunt is there down low like i'm on third gear and dude this thing is third gear right here So let's talk about the power delivery because I know a lot of you guys will give me crap by saying this is a beginner's friendly bike, but we all know it's not. This thing pulls hard man, like when you give it that throttle. So keep in mind guys, I came from a KLX 250 and a DRZ400E. Now I was on this bike for a good 4 or 5 months before switching over to the Husqvarna, but also keep in mind I would also use my buddy Smoker from time to time. Let's just say this, the TE250 second setting on the mapping is a controllable throttle response for someone who's been on an easy going bike for some time. Alright, so we're going to do 704, it's a pretty steep climb, I'm going to leave the sky on second gear, that way you guys can kind of see like how the low end does on this bike. I told him to go forward to, so you guys can more or less see how steep this hill is. So this is second gear right now, I'm just crawling right now. I don't want to go fast on purpose because I, I just want to demonstrate the low end torque this thing has. See? And this thing is steep. It's pretty steep, you know? So this thing definitely does have low end torque for you guys wondering about the 250i. I mean, obviously you can make it scream if you want. So this section that I'm on right now is a bit steeper than the first clip I showed you guys. I know camera does not do justice, but this was a pretty steep climb and was actually surprised how much low end grunt this 250 has. I know it's a little hard to believe, but the low end grunt is similar of a Beta 350 Double R, the one that I have. Probably a little more low end grunt though. I know, it sounds crazy. I'm not 100% sure if I'm even able to go this slow on the 350 Double R on second gear. I know, it's hard to believe. What is also nice about the 2019 TPI is it felt buttery smooth right out of the factory. I literally did not have to do make any adjustments and to be honest, I was a bit worried about a smoker being EFI and having no carbs. But so far, it has been great on all types of elevation change. The throttle is extremely responsive. I did not feel any delay, blips, or hiccups, and felt like the bike was running perfect, in my opinion. 
with no changes or modifications whatsoever. Yeah. So this TE250 also has some extra features, which is basic, but it's pretty nice to have, such as the electric start and also a backup Kickstarter, which is nice to have both, which seems to kickstart every first try as well. Also, after a few rides in, I ended up checking the airbox and definitely seems like a nice tight fit. I didn't see any dirt or debris in the surrounding area, so that is definitely a plus. Anyhow, if you guys want to see more dirt bike reviews and overall trail riding and Colorado exploring, go ahead and subscribe, click that bell button, and also feel free to leave a comment as well as I love hearing from the community. And I'll catch you guys on my next video.